Being a black folks, I and mean, basically it's getting close to Christmas, and San, Santa's got pretty much the elves whipped up to full capacity, and they pretty much, and if you've got any kids at the house, you can sit there and tell them that this is Santa Claus's uh, toy bag, and then basically he has way more than one toy bag. There's another toy bag that's up over here that we've seen in my other video, and you know about that, because basically we had an object between the sun, which is over here, the, uh, don't let this fool you either because basically you got to remember Venus looks large because it's close to the camera. This is also, this is damn big, don't get that wrong. But the factual that if it was the same distance as the sun away, and no, it's not the sun's, it's not a 3D image of the sun, ladies and gentlemen, okay? It's not that, it's not a photo thing. This thing is actually out there in the massive distances of space between Venus and the sun. And I'll give you, I'll compute that in a few minutes. But anyway, so if you got kids around, you just basically tell them this is just stuff that's been up in space for billions of years, and NASA doesn't want to tell you about it because big things scare people. And uh, if you think it's a shadow of the sun, you're really messed up. You need to go get yourself on drugs. Go to your doctor and get yourself on drugs. Don't buy street drugs. They're too good. You can control them yourself. You know, you just take them what you need, and you wouldn't be reliant on a doctor all the time. So then you'd be in control of yourself. So, we don't want that. You go to your doctor and get some drugs because you believe that this is just a gas ball or that it's not there. And that there, which, go see if you can get your pointer to turn to that. You see that? I, I'm just magical. I'm a wizard. Look at that. My pointer turns to that. Can you get your pointer to turn to that? So, anyhow as we are looking at a very bright portion of it as it goes along here and you see and no that's not a comet it's a part of this huge and it's big so it's an element of it and it's a very good signature as you can see right there you can see that now is this the atmosphere of this object here that you see right there? You can't miss it. Is it follows along exactly with? And we've got a meatball, and it's a cowboy meatball. And cowboys eat real beef, so it's real meatballs. So, anyway, I want to say Merry Christmas to all the cattle barons in North America and around the world. And got gold, got black gold. So anyhow, Merry Christmas to everybody in the whole world. So anyhow, this has got a perfect signature. As you see that right there. Can't miss it. It travels right along with this. No matter what, this is huge. No matter what, this is big. There, on it, as it moves along. So let's zoom in on that. So no matter what, that pair of stars travels along with it right there. As you can see that. So they travel along the outside of it, or the inside of it, and it's huge. You can't miss that, so let's glue in on that a little bit more. It's just part of its rotation is what it is, but you, that star helps you see the rotation of it. So it rotates counterclockwise just like us, so it's part of our solar system. And I'll move over a little bit. I can't point, but you can see the stars as they rotate and they come forward. It's part of it. So there's a lot of stuff between that object and Venus and that. So. So yes, this huge optic is out there, okay? 
and it rotates counterclockwise, okay? You know it's there, you know it rotates counterclockwise, and you know it's huge. And those are big stars that are down there that rotate along with it. And Venus just looks big because it's up here having its electrical magnetical of the Sun and the Van Allen belts basically getting flared a lot right now because of all the CME action and this here. So it does have some gravitational pull to it, very, very much massive, this here massive sized object did. So, is it pretty much, uh, heart plays the Van Allen belts pretty dang good. So, it stirs everything up, so when you see the electrical here getting flared up, and you've also seen footage of the Earth doing it, and I'll throw some footage of the Earth in real fast, you can understand why our volcanoes are heating up atomic energy, static electricity, statical heat, atomic static heat energy, volcanoes, the core of Earth, the magma, the magnetical magma, and also remember our comet's still in view right here, as you see it flare up a little bit, you see that just a little bit right there at the very end, you'll see it right there where my pointer's at, okay? Comet's still there. You can blow in and out real fast, too. We'll go 999. Boom, 999. We're in there. I'm going to go up the ladder for Venus, and there is the comet. Hang on. There it is. Okay. Moving away. The head of it's pretty much out there by those stars there to the right. It might actually just be in between these stars, but you can see the misty's tail of it. Yep, that's the comet moving away right there. It's way the hell out there now. Massive distances here out in space, so now yeah, we'll pop over to... And then, yep, that's where we were zoomed in on right there. Okay, just so I could use the pointer. I could get even zoomed in more than that, but I ain't going to show too much, so we'll go ahead and... Sh so we'll pop over to B and see what we got, and we got Earth over there on the right, and I got it marked. I don't think we're going to get any, it doesn't look like we can, you still actually like see the flashing of Venus up above. But you don't get to see it. And there you go. So we're going through, and then we'll zoom in on Earth there. So there's our atmospheric pressure keeping the electrical on the outside and just keeping our cling to our magnetical hairline in the Van Allen belts to the sun. So, because it's our solar system that we're stuck in. So, the sun's off to the left. As you can see, some of the electrical energy coming in. Uh, fine nanoparticles of sun that come off and come through our, do, do end up getting through our atmosphere. And up here in the upper right, you can pretty much see that the idea that the Venus is doing its flaring over here. You just don't see it because it's behind here. It's not in the shot, but you can see the light illuminating off of it a little bit onto the uh, electrical magnetical line of Earth right up here. You should see that. And then also the sun off to the left, which we will pan over to now, and you'll see that it, we rotate counterclockwise, and you can see it as this comes around, see, it's on the left hand side, and then it works its way over to the right hand side, that's our rotation, counterclockwise, the only thing that rotates clockwise in our, that we know of, because see, we found more planets now, since NASA was, was having to go wide out to see what the heck's going on because everybody's nervous about everything that uh, all the physicists are seeing all kinds of stuff that they've never seen before because and then everybody gets to see it so that's the sun to the left more than likely this Pleiades up over there quite possible because Pleiades is pretty much something that's pretty much always been seen to us over there. Pretty much keeps its position all the time. I.e. Pleiades. 
And then, uh, that's what we got from, uh, so kind of boring, so we'll go ahead and go ahead and, now BH12 is kind of boring right now, but remember, this is where we found the comet. So you got to study this closely because you could end up seeing another comet. Now, uh, the last time I saw the comet on this footage that we could see it, it was basically moving up here, and I didn't really, really did a video on it, but I did it. You, know, you can see it over this way. Okay, we seen that comet, and then it went up, and I could see it. You walk, if you go back through the dates, if you go to set you, you can see it just go up on this. But so right now, you have to study this closely. If you could zoom in, if you do have time, you can study in here, and you might end up finding another comet moving along. So, because eventually you're going to see ice on, and eventually. Uh, you should be able to see whatever the heck is coming. I mean, as long as they don't black it out, we should eventually be able to see what's coming around DA14. Uh, or it'll be maybe DA14 moves so slowly that you won't be able to see it, but it's going to be so close to Earth that we should be able to zoom in and get an idea of seeing it, the trail of it or something like that. And basically, it should be in this shot right now because in February, it'll be the closest thing that's ever going to come to Earth, so object, it might, it's pretty darn small, we'll get, I'm not worried about the size of it right now, but we'll get into the size of DA-14, February 13th through the 16th, so, study these closely, because sometimes it, see, it looks boring right now, but then the next thing you know, it pops up, because last time we thought this was boring, we had that comet coming along, and we ended up figuring out that it was behind Jupiter, and that, that means it's way the hell out, and it did come up in view, but it was way the hell out, that direction in infinite space but you know close enough to be able to be seen and we just seen it on the last footage what we were showing you going away by over by uh, Venus because it was up above Venus and Mercury so now we'll go ahead and see what's on A on so here we're in on the shot that basically now that NASA has had me show people that there is more planets out there than and then what's great is they uh, turn the satellite here the other day and we're gonna I'm gonna make another video so I'll be making a video of that satellite turning and you can see Uranus and uh, Neptune and, and uh, Mars because basically uh, you're not really supposed to see it on A and you can't really see it with B because B would have to turn around uh, but B is so busy with what we got going on with the comet that is up there back up this video when I showed you the comment see B is so busy with that that they turned a here over to see that now we counted all these planets out there so we know pretty much what we just got to start figuring out in positions of what they are uh, and if they're not named then we can start naming them ourselves what do we need NASA for it's space that's right that's what MacArthur said a long time ago, that the idea that we will be, f the next world war will be, or war of the, of, uh, at least the, uh, solar system, okay, it won't be Star Battlestar Galactica, okay, but, uh, yeah, there's planets way more than what, uh, we are led to, to from all the science and officials of power and whatever, it's space, and it's objects that are out there, and uh, astronomers usually get to name them. And we're getting to the point of, let's put it this way, China wants to get on to the moon, okay? And so does everybody else, and we're going to get there, okay? And we've been there already, we know that. We already know we've been there. So uh, we've got flags, we've got stuff there. And uh, it's a poker game. It was the Cold War, and we won that, and we will win the... And if we don't, then we don't, but at least we might inhabit Titan or something else before anybody else does. So it just depends on where countries and corporations want to spend their money and where they want to go. Um, so I know where Bino wants to go. I'm going to have a beer on the moon before I'm dead. I know that. It's an actual fact. Uh, and I'll be alive when I drink it. I won't be in a coffin sitting there on the moon. Uh, I'll be there and have a drink. And there's usually always a good female spy that wants to go somewhere, spy on something to see what's going on. So I'm sure she'll be beautiful. Actually, I, I won't put up with just one. I'll want to have one from every country. So anyway, I'll be having a beer on the moon someday. 